नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर नीलाक्षी डेका कंसल्टेंट एंडोक्रोनोलॉजिस्ट सो वी नो दैट प्रेगनेंसी इज अ वेरी क्रूशल पीरियड ऑफ अ वुमेन्स लाइफ बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली इन सर्टन प्रेगनेंसीज इट कैन बी कंप्लिकेटेड बाय हाइपरग्लाइसेमिया सो दिस कंडीशन ऑफ हैविंग हाई ब्लड ग्लूकोज ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी इज नोन एज जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज now that gestational diabetes is again a very important condition because the risk associated with gestational diabetes can be avoided with good care and uh, careful measures now gdm can have adverse both maternal as well as fetal adverse effects maternal adverse effects like suffering and miscarriage having an abortion or fetal adverse effects like having intrauterine fetal demise macrosomia neurological defects in the fetus these are a few conditions or risk that arises out of gestational diabetes hence it is very important for us as individuals to actually take care of gestational diabetes or gestational hyperglycemia during pregnancy now there are four important aspects in gdm management and if you look into the guidelines it says that monitoring is one of the key important measures that can actually take care of gestational diabetes mellitus so the four key important management techniques for gdm includes monitoring that is self monitoring of blood glucose or monitoring of blood glucose next would come into the non pharmacological therapies like diet nutrition therapy then comes the pharmacological therapies which could be different kinds of therapies that your clinician will provide to you like it could be insulin it could be metformin and finally the obstetric management which includes the timing of delivery or the mode of delivery in the patient so when we look into these gdm management principles we see that glucose monitoring is one of the important aspects and that is what we are going to discuss in today's discussion self monitoring of blood glucose which means the ways or techniques by which a woman can measure her blood glucose levels uh, during her pregnancy by checking it with a glucometer checking the blood glucose is very important because it increases the awareness in the mother gives her confidence as regarding uh, keeping her blood glucose levels under control so when you look into the guidelines the recommendations for fasting and pp in women during the pregnancy is different from non pregnant adults guidelines say the fasting has to be somewhere close between 70 to 95 the fasting plasma glucose or the blood glucose which is done after 8 hours of fasting the postprandial blood glucose which means the blood glucose after a meal after 1 hour should be between 120 to 140 and that at 2 hours after meal should be somewhere between 110 to 120 these values of fasting as well as pp are lower when you compare to non pregnant adults so gestational diabetes is detection of hyperglycemia or elevated blood glucose for the first time during the pregnancy so it is a very important parameter that we should look for in a pregnant women in order to make the pregnancy safe and successful measuring the blood glucose measuring the bp measuring the weight of the uh, pregnant lady is very important to measure for the first time and also monitor them throughout the pregnancy and after her delivery so that can be done every day or with a glucometer monitoring though it may appear that the glucometer pricks are painful however let me assure you that these pricks may initially seem to be pain painful but with the newer lancets which are available with the glucometers now it has become virtually painless and a lady should be measuring the blood glucose levels at particular times of the day now it has been found that blood glucose elevation after food is more associated with macrosomia or a bigger baby after delivery hence it is important that the lady not only measures the pre meal blood glucose or the fasting blood glucose but they should also measure the 2 hours postprandial blood glucose so this 
टू आवर्स पोस्ट प्रैंडल ग्लूकोज कैन बी मेजर्ड आफ्टर ब्रेकफास्ट इट कुड बी मेजर्ड टू आवर्स आफ्टर लंच इट कुड बी मेजर्ड टू आवर्स आफ्टर डिनर सो अ वीमेन हैज़ टू मेनटेन अ लॉग बुक से ऑन मंडे यू मेजर फास्टिंग एंड टू आवर्स आफ्टर ब्रेकफास्ट ऑन ट्यूजडे यू कुड मेजर फास्टिंग एंड टू आवर्स आफ्टर लंच ऑन वेनजडे यू कैन अगेन गो टू प्री लंच एंड टू आवर्स आफ्टर डिनर सो एसेसिंग द ब्लड ग्लूकोज वैल्यूज एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स ऑफ द डे विच कुड गिव अ मीनिंगफुल इंफॉर्मेशन टू द क्लिनिशन रिगार्डिंग योर ब्लड ग्लूकोज कंट्रोल ओवर द वीक प्रोवाइड्स इंपॉर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन टू द डॉक्टर for assessing the diabetic status as well as taking appropriate steps to uh, counter those blood glucose values or to manage your diabetes so suppose you have a high blood glucose after breakfast you should also include what you took for breakfast that day say in the bracket you could include what you had taken that led to elevated 2 hours post breakfast values in that way it would be easier for us to you know um uh, curtail our diet that way so that to structure our diet in a way that it does not lead to these spikes of blood glucose after breakfast or after lunch usually diet and nutrition counseling forms one of the important parameters in the management of diabetes most patients respond with good dietary regimen if they follow which is taking an appropriate proportion of carbohydrates fats proteins and fibers uh carbohydrate could be around 30% 30 to 35% of your diet good proportion uh, has to be included with protein again here i would like to say that ketogenic diets which many people take in non -adult, non pregnant adults is not safe during pregnancy and in pregnancy one has to take a balanced diet of carbohydrates proteins fats and fibers include lots of vegetables and some fruits in your diet so that the blood glucose spikes are not there so there is a difference between structured smbg and non structured smbg so if you do a structured smbg that is looking for specific glucose values which is fasting and post prandial blood glucose that is known as structured smbg whereas non structured would be like a person who is say i am free at this moment so i just check randomly my blood glucose that is known as non structured smbg usually structured smbg provides more information more crucial information compared to non structured smbg but we have recommendations for fasting which should be between 70 to 90 and post prandial at 2 hours which should be less than 120 or at 1 hour less than 140 so keeping in mind these values individuals with gestational diabetes who have true gestational diabetes per se that is they did not have pre existing type 1 or type 2 but did have a gestational diabetes they are also likely to have diabetes later in their course of life say 5 years after the delivery or 10 years after the delivery there is a high risk around 30 to 50% risk of a women with gestational diabetes developing type 2 diabetes later in their course of life hence when gestational diabetes when the topic of gestational diabetes our duty does not end by stopping the monitoring after delivery but 6 weeks to 3 months after delivery we again need to reassess the lady by doing an oral glucose uh, tolerance test to find out if she still has hyperglycemia which would mean that she has developed type 2 diabetes or maybe she had pre existing type 2 diabetes which has continued into the post delivery phase hence it is very important to even continue monitoring the blood glucose levels post delivery in order to pick up early in the course of uh, diabetes which develops after gestational diabetes and that is also recommended by various national and international guidelines so i feel this pregnancy period which is a very crucial period of a women's life can be made a pleasant experience can be made a successful experience with good monitoring of blood glucose which can help pick up hyperglycemia early in the course before it actually has adverse effects on your pregnancy so having spoken on gestational diabetes 
Now, a normal question would be, which are the kind of pregnant women who should actually look for their gestational diabetes or who should actually monitor their blood glucose levels? So this is true for almost all women with pregnancy that they should monitor their blood glucose levels because pregnancy is considered to be an insulin resistant state where there is a lot of hormonal turmoil in the body, counter regulating hormones are on the surge and these hormone milieu, the hormone milieu which occurs as a result of pregnancy, the physiological, the endocrinological changes in the body actually makes a woman more predisposed to develop hyperglycemia during pregnancy. Hence, the importance of monitoring blood glucose during pregnancy. So women who are overweight, obese, who have PCOS, who have a family history of diabetes, you know, these are the kind of women who should be more aware that they are predisposed to develop di gestational diabetes and hence they should take measures for monitoring of the blood glucose more during the pregnancy. Also these group of women who have a history of family history of diabetes, who have a family history of PCOS or who are obese or overweight in the preconception period, they should discuss it with their uh, treating gynecologist regarding the importance of monitoring of blood glucose so that they can be directed in a particular way referred to a physician or uh, someone who has special experience in diabetes to monitor their condition so they, they can be counseled regarding the diet and nutrition, counseled regarding the importance of exercise and counseled regarding the measurement of blood glucose levels and keeping it under control. In order to help pregnant women actually monitor their blood glucose levels, there are many smartphone applications now which are available. So with the help of these smartphone applications which are connected to the glucometer, you can enhance the information or you can increase the information by say clicking a picture of the food or the meal that you are going to have. You can also enter the amount of insulin that you are about to take prior to the meal and then you can have an assessment of your insulin dose, the meal based upon the postprandial blood glucose levels. It will also help you or empower you in self-monitoring of blood glucose and empower you in titrating the adequate insulin dose based upon the meal. So this way smartphone applications connected to glucometer can be a great help during SMBG in your pregnancy to improve the pregnancy outcomes. So what gets monitored? actually gets measured and what gets measured gets managed also. So it is very important for a pregnant woman to measure their blood glucose levels to have the, this increases the awareness in them and also builds the confidence in them of monitoring blood glucose and keeping it under control and the confidence of having a successful outcome at the end of pregnancy.